Hello friends, in this small video, I am going to take you through key differences between portfolio management services and alternative investment funds. I am sure you have heard name of these two investment options uh, which are available to uh, rich individuals or high net worth individuals. Now, portfolio management services is provided to those investors who can afford to invest at least 50 lakhs or those who have investable service surplus of 50 lakhs while AIF typically is open for those investors who are ready to put at least a crore rupees well that is just one difference that uh, you may have heard of when it comes to portfolio management service and alternative investment fund but in this video, I will take you through some of the nuances between the two so that you get a clear cut picture about the differences that you have between PMS and AIF. So let me start by first explaining to you the concept of pooling of funds. Okay. So portfolio management services as well as alternative investment funds, both of them pool money from various investors, right? So that, there comes the concept of pooling. They are basically investment vehicles which do pooling of uh, funds from investors. Once the funds are pooled, they are invested by the fund manager in both the cases, whether it is PMS or AIF. But let us see how there is a difference between pooling of funds between PMS and AIF. So pooling of investor funds is done for onboarding investors in case of portfolio management services doing trades etc so you know when you onboard an investor okay and investor funds you get funds from various investors you will pool them and you will also use that pool fund at the time of buying and selling of shares however securities are held at individual client level since separate demat accounts are created for every investor so when there is a portfolio management service uh, being provided say to 100 investors for each of the investor the pms will open a separate account and keep shares separately but when it comes to you know uh, acquiring the fund and uh, kind of pooling those funds that is fine you can do that as a pms right uh, trading you can do for an individual or trading you can also do at the pool uh, pool level but when it comes to keeping the securities which which has been purchased for the investors and the pms uh, services then it has to be kept separately in case of aif the pooling of investor funds is compulsory for collective investment right this is there is there is no option but to compulsorily pool it okay Trading is done only at the pool level, that is at the fund level. So here you don't have a separate, you know, facility of uh, trading being done uh, for individuals. It has to be done at the pool level only. So that is the first difference when it comes to a PMS and AIF. Uh, the first difference, as I mentioned, relates to how the funds are pooled by both PMS as well as AIF. Let us move to the second difference. What is the minimum investment amount and minimum corpus which is required? So when it comes to PMS, as I have already said, the minimum investment amount required is 50 lakhs. There is no minimum corpus required for starting PMS, which means there's no threshold that you have to start a PMS that you should at least have 10 investors or 5 crore. Okay, The PMS can be started even with one investor. right? Uh, in case of AIF, INR 1 crore or INR 25 lakhs is minimum investment which is required. Okay, this INR 1 crore is required for uh, investors, general investors, 25 lakhs for the employees. However, uh, INR 1 crore is not required for accredited investors. So, if you are an accredited investor, you don't require 1 crore of minimum investment. I will explain to you what exactly is accredited investor. Category 3 IFs corpus has to be minimum 20 crores. So 
uh, I'm sure you know you would be knowing by now that we have category 1, category 2 and category 3 AIFs. So category 3 AIFs are basically the one who invest in you know uh, listed securities as well as make complex investment strategies using derivatives and leverage. Hedge fund is one such example of category 3 AIF okay who invest in category 3 AIF rather. So this category 3 AIF is uh, 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 where you will need a minimum of rupees 20 crores. So that's the difference in terms of minimum investment amount and minimum corpus. Now let us move to uh, the lock-in period. Is there a lock-in period which is applicable? Uh, well, there is a lock-in period. PMS investors have the choice to withdraw funds at any time since the securities are in their own name. There is a maximum exit load defined by SEBI up to three years for each investment exit. So up to three years, if you are exiting from the PMS, you will have to pay exit load and that has been defined by SEBI for each of the year, first, second and third year. Close-ended category 3 IFs units typically have a lock-in period, whereas open-ended funds subject to lock-in and exit load could allow investors to redeem monthly or earlier. So both are possible whether monthly or you know even earlier than that and these close ended category 3 ifs uh, have uh, you know a lock in period okay in open ended the treatment is separate as you can see here now i spoke to you about accredited investors so before i proceed i would like to spend some time on explaining what is an accredited investors you saw that aifs in case of aifs okay accredited investors don't have to invest minimum 1 crore so SEBI introduced the framework for accredited investors in Indian securities market. And who are these accredited investors? So the framework of AI or accredited investor says that these investors have flexibility in minimum investment amount and concessions from specific regulatory requirements applicable to investment products subject to very specific conditions. Now, well, accredited investors uh, have been defined for each category, individuals, body corporate and all that. So I'm not explaining, um, you know, uh, a lot of, or rather not spending a lot of time in explaining to you how are those, um, you know, classifications done precisely. But if you want to be an accredited investor, you need to have a certification certificate of accreditation by an accredited agency. So this is very important because uh, once an accreditation agency gives you uh, accreditation, uh, uh, then you become an accredited investor and you will not have to invest minimum one crore in case of AIF. However, these investors are very rich, you know, so this uh, is something which will not practically uh, count, right? Uh, uh, even if th that one crore limit is not apl applicable to them, and they are anywhere rich and very rich investors. Next is, what is the minimum number of investors which is required when it comes to PMS as well as uh, the AIFs, right? So when it comes to PMS, you can see here very clearly that there is no cap specified on the maximum number of investors so minimum number of investors could be one a maximum number of investors there is no cap for AIFs maximum number of investors cannot exceed 1000 so there is a classification very clearly in terms of the number of investors which can be there in both PMS as well as AIF okay now what is the manager's contribution or net worth criteria for PMS and AIF this is also one key difference right so no requirement for manager's contribution basically there is no skin in the game here, which means manager is not putting any money. However, the manager needs to have a net worth of 5 crore at all times. So the minimum net worth that you should have is 5 crores. Managers or sponsors should hold at least 5% of the corpus or 10 crores in case of AIF, whichever is lower. However, there are no net worth criteria. So you would have seen by now that we have differentiated PMS and AIF on multiple parameters pooling of the funds, uh, what is the minimum and maximum number of investors, what is the manager's contribution, uh, what is the lock-in period. So all these pra parameters uh, basically create differences between these two types of funds. Uh, I'm sure this video uh, would have helped you, but in case you have any feedback to give, you can write to me on healthofmywealth at gmail.com. 
uh thank you so much for your time please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video thank you